We are back at Woburn Bowl for a round of eight match here in the Pro Series playoffs. In this segment, you're going to see the first string of two matches on the left pair, lanes 27 and 28. Sean Baker is taking on Skip Easterbrooks. And then over on 29 and 30, Brandon Marks is facing John Winchell. Brandon gets going with a nine drop, leaving the three pin. And you can also see John Zappi over on uh, 31 and 32. And then over on 25 and 26, Jim Ayotte is taking on Jason Doucette. And Brandon Marks failing to convert that three pin. I guess there wasn't enough wood in front of it for him to uh, be able to convert it. But anyway, that'll be a nine box to begin for uh, Brandon. Sean Baker also open in the first box. He, he begins with an eight. Both of these guys, however, have had an excellent year. As I'm sure you know, uh, Sean Baker was second in the point standings on in the Pro Series. And uh, Brandon Marks also had an excellent year. Sean Baker missing the head pin on the right side, leaving the one, four, and seven. He has a piece of wood next to the, uh, diagonally next to the head pin, which might help him cover the four, seven. And wow, it just goes around the four pin. Takes out the seven, but it does not cover the four. So he'll be open again in the second box. That's a nine, so Sean has 17 through two. Brandon Marks with 18 through the second as he gives way to John Winchell. And Skip Easterbrooks begins on the left pair, on the left lane, lane 27. And Skip has the 2, 8, and 10. Some wood between, well, in front of the 2 pin and also between the 2 and the 8. <clears throat> Let's see if he can find a way to cover all three of these. And he gets the 2 and 10, but he's not able to get anything to go back and get the 8. So he'll be open in the first. John Winchell with a 9 box. And Skip with 10. John Winchell bowls out of Exeter. Exeter, New Hampshire, that is. And there is a strike in the second box for John Winchell. Really pretty authoritative pocket hit there. Not leaving much doubt. And Skip Easterbrook's dropping nine. He's got the six pin with a piece of wood in front of it. Another piece of wood rolling over against it. Should be able to record a spare in a second. And he does. <clears throat> Skip defeated Chris Sacchetti in the in the round of 16. And there's a, a very light hit by Brandon Marks on the left side. Let's take a look at this. He just clips the left side of the head pin and it goes flying up to the to the ceiling and comes down and takes out the 9 and 10 and then comes to rest in between the 3 and 5. Actually, not in a bad position. He might be able to convert this. This is the 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And he gives it a good try. Gets everything but the 4. That is a very unusual leave. We've seen a number of those today. Sean Baker getting a little too much of a head pin in his effort to convert that 1, 3, and 7. He'll take a 10 in the third box. Brandon with just two in the in the fourth, taking out the four and eight. 
So he'll be trying to work that out. Meanwhile, you can see Jim Ayotte over on lane 26. Jim, of course, was the number one bowler in the point standings this year, so he, he earns the title bowler of the year. He was just very, very solid throughout the year. <clears throat> you caught a glimpse of Jonathan McDonald over on lane 31. He's bowling against John Zappi. Sean Baker still looking for his first mark of the match. This is the first string of a two-string match, I should remind you. So, if you get behind in this format, there's a little bit more time to make a comeback than in a one-string match where you pretty much, if your opponent gets one flurry going, that usually wraps it up. In a two-stringer, you have time to come back. If Easterbrook's going through the middle, he punched out the one, five, seven, and eight. I'm trying to work that out. John Winchell with a nine fill on the spare. And Skippy with a nine box. Pretty good out there to get, get out of that with a nine. Skip had a 269 in his previous round win over Chris Sacchetti. Skippy really had had the strike ball working. He had know, four or five strikes in that match and a lot of other really sturdy hits. He had the first ball generating a lot of action for him. And here he's got nine, and looking at the five pin, and he pushes that wood. That was uh, well out in front, so it was a little bit trickier than it might have appeared, but he was able to get enough of the wood to push it straight back into the five. <coughs> Meanwhile, John Winchell with a spare as well. He converted the ten pin. So Sean Baker is back up on lane 27, and he doesn't want to let Skip get too far ahead of him. Sean has... Uh, has yet to mark, and he's got the Kaleri, which is not an easy spare, even though he does have a piece of wood in front of the eight, which could give him a little bit of help. He goes to the left side, and actually almost gets it coming back, but uh, he will be open in the fifth box again. Brandon is looking at the one, eight, and nine. That was kind of a strange hit that he had. He's gonna try and he converts that spare nicely, pushes the, uh, you can see he had this piece of wood in front of the, the head pin, and he pushes it straight back to cover the eight and nine. So that's Brandon's first mark of the match in the fifth. Sean Baker struggling a little bit to find the head pin so far in this match. Certainly didn't struggle in his first, uh, in his previous round of 16 match. He had strings of 141 and 135 in defeating Bob Whitcomb. You might have seen that. We had that previously. But he's uh, temporarily at least lost the head pin. He's going to have to uh, settle in a little bit. Find it again against Skip Easterbrooks, who is undoubtedly not going to give a lot of room. Just a six for uh, Sean Baker, and he has got, I think, 53 through six. If I'm reading the score correctly, it's a little hard to see. <clears throat> but in any case, he has no marks yet. Skip with a nice ball, uh, a little full on that in, in the one three side. He, uh, Fills the spare with seven. He's got two, four, and six. 
and that almost goes. He got the inside of the two pin, and it almost it, it kicked off the four and almost went over to kick to, to take out the six, which it will occasionally do when that happens when you get the inside of that leave. John Winchell with another spare. He's got two and three marks in his last four boxes. John Winchell had an outstanding performance at the 20 string Easter Classic earlier this month. <clears throat> Came very close to winning that event. Really, really tough tournament to win. It's really just total bowling immersion for a day as uh, you, you really have to grind it out over 20 strings. But John really had some impressive bowling in the latter part of that tournament when it really starts to get down to business because you're tired and sore. Trying to make it three spares in a row. Not quite able to get the, that uh, the 10 pin. He had the one, three, seven, and 10. So he'll be looking to three four to 10 box, and he does. So Brandon Marks will be back up on lane 29, while Sean Baker is on 27. Sean the, finds the head pin this time, but he gets too much of it, and he leaves one of the variants of the big five. This is the two, three, four, six, seven. And good bit, he was trying to catch the left side of the two pin. Didn't quite do it, so he just took out the four and seven. So again, he will be open. And that'll be a nine box for Sean Baker. As we look at this nice little shot by Jim Ayotte over on lane 26 in his match against Jason Doucette. Brandon Marks with a 10 box. And finally a mark for Sean Baker, and it's a strike. Nice ball. We'll take another look at it, and you will see that the head pin goes to the sidewall and comes back, slides across, and gets the five pin. <clears throat> so it's a pretty timely strike for Sean Baker. He needs it to uh, avoid letting Skip Easterbrooks get get too far ahead of him. And Skip just with a four drop, missing the head pin to the left. And there's a nice shot by Skip for the spare. Let's take a replay on that. Perfectly done. Left side of the head pin, the ball takes out the 4-7. Head pin wipes out the 3-6 and 9. Really a uh, classic way to make that spare. Probably the best way to make it if you have to, is to play it on the, on the outside. And Skip will be filling that in as he comes into the 8th, and he goes right through the middle. Red Eagle for Skip Easterbrooks. Well, John Winchell is looking at the Kaleri and just takes out the 8 pin, so he'll have an open box in the 7th. And Skippy with a great bid on that Spread Eagle, almost taking it out. He clipped that 2 pin over to take out the 6 10. Got everything but the 3. And now that's gone, so at least he makes the most out of that spare that he had in the uh, seven. Now Sean Baker will be trying to 
do something to take advantage of that strike that he had in, in the eighth. As he comes up for the last two frames of this first string of the uh, this two string match. And there is a strike by John Winchell. That was another one of those splash hits, very full on the head pin. Two and three pins go to the sidewall and wipe out the four, six, seven, ten. We've seen a lot of those today. Very lively conditions here at Hoover Bowl. Brandon Marks in the ninth. Fills his spare with, well, it's going to be eight after a fashion. He's got the one and eight, and you can see he's got some wood there that should help him take the eight pin if he can hit the head pin. And not to be, he actually went by the head pin. The wood spun around and took it, but nothing got the eight pin. So he'll be open in the ninth. That'll be a nine box. Sean Baker on the head pin, but he's got four, seven, eight, and ten. A couple couple different ways he could play this. He'll probably play the triangle on the left. And he does. He tries to get the uh, four pin to hit the the wood and the eight and kick over into the ten. Almost doing it, but not quite. So that'll be a 10 box, and that is a 98 string. Pretty disappointing there. He only had one mark. So he will be trailing Skip Easterbrooks after, after the first string. We'll see exactly how many after Skip pulls his last two. Brandon Marks with a nice ball in the 10th, but not <clears throat> not really what he was. Well, let's see. Didn't quite get uh, as many as he might have, but he, he was able to get eight on that last ball. And there is a strange uh, spare by Skip. He missed the head pin twice, but made the spare. Um, that uh, wood comes off the wall and takes out the head pin. And meanwhile, Brandon Marks with, I think that's a 116 game. I was not really paying attention, obviously, that, that last ball he threw was a fill on the spare, but uh, he has, I believe that's a 116. Any, in any case, we'll give you a closer shot of the scoreboard uh, when they're done momentarily. Skippy with a six fill on the spare. He's got the two, four, seven, and eight. The uh, operative term there being eight because the eight pin is going to be the difficult one to get. Let's see what he can do. And he's got it. Nice hit there. He, he uh, went to the right side of the, the uh, two pin. Took the two, four, seven pretty quickly and one of the pins went back to get the eight. There might have been a piece of wood in there. It was a little hard to to see from here. <clears throat> but that's a nice shot by Skip in any case. So he has one more ball to go to finish out the uh, finish out the string. Stretch his lead over Sean Baker a little bit. And that's gonna be a six drop for Skip. And as soon as John Winchell finishes his 10th box, we will go to the scoreboard. John Winchell looking for his third mark in a row. And he's got it. Strike in the eighth and then spares in the ninth and 10th. So he will be throwing one more ball to finish up the string.
and John delivers. That's going to be a seven drop to finish. So on the Yeah, here we go. On the left side, Skip Easterbrooks has a 125 to 98 lead over Sean Baker after the first string. And you can see John Winchell, 145, Brandon Marks, 116, and we'll be back with the second string a little later on. <laughs> 